welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're going to talk about axonal degeneration. So with that, let's give it a go. So before we get into the content of this video, I want to first go over the overview of what topics we're going to cover. So we're first going to answer the question as to whether neurons and axons regenerate. Then we're going to talk about axonal degeneration in detail. And then we'll finish off this video by talking about whether glial cells regenerate. So with that, let's give it a go. So the first question that we're going to answer is whether neurons regenerate. And the answer to this question is generally no. So most neurons are going to arise within the first four months of intrauterine life. However, most neurons after birth do not divide. In fact, if a neuron is lost after birth, it generally is not going to be replaced. However, one exception to this rule, olfactory bulb neurons. The olfactory bulb neurons are going to be continually replaced throughout adult life. So then this brings up the question as to whether axons regenerate. And the answer to this question is yes and no. So axons in the central nervous system don't regenerate effectively. However, axons in the peripheral nervous system can regrow. And this is most likely due to the local environments that these neurons are exposed to rather than their own intrinsic abilities. So now that we answered these two questions, let's talk about axonal degeneration in more detail. And let's start off by first describing the figure that we're going to be using for the majority of this video. So in this figure, we have three neurons that are synaptically connected to one another. And some general structures of the neuron that I want to remind you of are the following. So the first is going to be the cell body. And the cell body is going to contain organelles, the nucleus, as well as the endoplasmic reticulum or nissl substance. So projecting from the cell body, we also have the dendrites. So the dendrites are projections that project off of the cell body, and they're going to receive signals from other neurons. In addition, we also have the axon. So the axon also projects off of the cell body, and it's going to be responsible for taking information from the direction of the cell body to the synaptic terminal. And in the synaptic terminal, we see electrical signals converted to chemical signals. And these chemical signals are going to be neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters are released from the synaptic terminal onto target cells. So on the axon, if the cell is myelinated, the myelin is going to be generated by different types of cells. So if the neuron is in the peripheral nervous system and myelinated, the Schwann cells are going to be responsible for making the myelin sheath. And if the neuron is myelinated and in the central nervous system, this is the myelin sheath is going to be generated by the oligodendrocytes. So these are all the important parts of the figure that we're going to talk about today. So now that we know the different parts of this figure, let's talk about how axonal degeneration occurs. So let's just say that the middle neuron sustains an injury. And this injury separates the synaptic terminal and part of the axon from the rest of the cell. What is going to happen to this neuron? So the process of axonal degeneration is going to occur. And the first step of axonal degeneration is going to be the degeneration of the synaptic terminals distal to the lesion. So what we're going to see in this process is that synaptic transmission is going to stop or fail within hours of sustaining the injury. So synaptic transmission occurring at the terminal distal to the lesion will fail within hours of the injury. What we're also going to see is some visible changes over the course of a few days. And eventually the terminal is also going to retract from the postsynaptic cell. The second step is going to be Wallerian degeneration. So Wallerian degeneration is when the part of the axon distal to the lesion degenerates. This process takes place over a couple of weeks and it leads to the eventual destruction and removal of this axon distal to the lesion. The third part is when the myelin distal to the lesion degenerates and leaves debris behind. However, the myelating cell usually survives. Note that Schwann cells are immediately induced to divide and begin synthesizing trophic factors that could be important for regeneration. The fourth step is when microglia, which are present in the central nervous system, or macrophages in Schwann cells, which are present in the peripheral nervous system, take up the debris. 
This process tends to occur more quickly in the peripheral nervous system than it does in the central nervous system. The next step is going to be chromatolysis. So chromatolysis is basically a process in which the cell body swells and undergoes the rearrangement of its organelles. So during this process of chromatolysis, the nucleus will swell and move to an eccentric position. The cell body is going to swell and the ER is going to reassemble around the periphery of the cell body. However, note that chromatolysis is a reversible process and it's reversible if the neuron survives and also the distal projections can reestablish contact with its appropriate targets. So the next thing that can happen is something called transneuronal degeneration, and there's two types. The first type is retrograde transneuronal degeneration. So in retrograde transneuronal degeneration, neurons that are synapsed to the injured neuron can also be injured. The other type is going to be anterograde transneuronal degeneration. This is going to occur if the neuron that received synaptic input from the injured cell degenerates. So that is the process of axonal degeneration. So now let's talk about the last question as to whether glial cells are going to regenerate. So glial cells can be replaced if they are lost or injured, so they can regenerate. And the process of replacing them can be accomplished through two ways. The first way is through progenitor cells that are slowly turning over, or stem cells that are activated by specific conditions. So that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you understand these different topics, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.